The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. This is Voices in Validation, brought to you by IVT Network. IVT Network is your expert source for life science regulatory knowledge. Voices in Validation brings you the best in validation and compliance topics. We interview industry experts from pharma, biotech, med devices, and laboratories. Here is the host of Voices in Validation, Stacy. Welcome. Thank you so much. We're so glad to have you here uh, for another episode of Voices in Validation, a podcast bringing you timely interviews with industry experts from pharma, biotech, medical devices, and life science manufacturing. Each week, we come here to discuss trending topics and industry best practices. And this week, we are pleased to have with us Igor Gorsky. Spent a lot of time working for the FDA, with the FDA, and specifically on compliance documentations. So we're thrilled to have you here with us today, Igor, to share your insights. Thank you so much, Stacey. I'm happy to be here, and thank you for the invitation. Uh, it's, it's, it's wild and excellent. Thank you. Of course. We'll have a lot of fun today. So um, for our listeners at home, the FDA's regulatory functions, as many of you know, began over a century ago with the 1906 Pure Food and Drugs Act. Since then, regulatory agencies from around the world have emerged as a means of protecting consumers and ensuring patient safety. Not only providing enforcement, agencies including the FDA, PICS, EMA, Health Canada, and many others issue guidance documents to ensure compliance. So today, as I mentioned, we have Igor Gorsky with us to share his vast knowledge of regulatory guidances and just what it takes to write and issue them. So Igor, let's start from the beginning. A key role of a regulatory is providing industry, is providing uh, industry the framework for working within regulations to expedite the development and delivery of safe and effective drugs or medical devices, et cetera usually provided in the form of regulations and guidances. Why are these guidances so important to the industry, to regulated industries? So um, as you mentioned um, initially, that the first guidances or the first um, attempted guidances were started back in 1906 uh, with the Food and Drug Act. uh, And that's in in response to the uh, to the book jungle uh, because there were no uh, um, there were no guidances basically um, the industries the food and drug and cosmetics uh, they were driven by by dollars uh, well <laughs> it's a good segue to unfortunately um, um, our age where uh, once again I mean we are driven I mean the industries are driven by dollars um, because of that uh, People tend to say, and over my uh, period in the industry, uh, people were talking about, oh, well, these guidances are written so we can interpret them. Um, you know, they, they actually very wide and, uh, and, and who knows what they mean. Uh, well, not so much. Uh, these guidances, <laughs> correct, yeah. So these guidances are written uh, for people, number one, to be practical, Okay. Uh, number two, number two, to provide a minimum uh, adequate uh, uh, care uh, into the subjects or into the uh, actions that they're doing. Okay, because some of these things are are very complex. When we're talking about uh, aseptic practices, uh, when we're talking about <clears throat> when we're talking about interpretation of data, when we're talking about validation, all of this stuff is pretty precise. And, uh, and, and your interpretation and my interpretation are different. What I'm um, typically say to people uh, in my talks is unfortunately nobody reads the guidances. <laughs> that's, that's, that's terrible. Uh, and I see this uh, as I've been, um, uh, I've been doing consulting in the last uh, almost eight years. Uh, and I've been in the industry uh, altogether around 30 prior to that. Uh, and, and as I said, people tend to think that guidances will somehow uh, impede their uh, daily work, daily production. On the contrary, guidances are written uh, to provide uh, a minimum of 
um, kind of a map, kind of a kind of a pathway sure. into how to how to do things, how to do them, how to do them practically, how to do them correctly, um, and and that, that's very important. That's very important because uh, these interpretations we see that people are inter- interpreting our guidances all over the world, and are not interpreting them, them very well because right. we see um, the the uh, warning letters on the rise. Why is that? People don't read them. But as I said, I mean, the, the, the industry is driven by money. And and if we actually, I think, why these kind of podcasts are, are good, and we're not talking about specific things, but why they're good is because uh, we, we stress the interest in guidances, right? So um, I, I want to talk a little bit about, not too much, but a little bit about um, my early years in uh, in quality assurance, where one of my directors, this guy by the name of uh, uh, Foley, he uh, um, um, had gave me uh, this this interesting insight uh, about the preamble to CGMPs. So it's a big, big book. So CGMPs uh, is is Code of Federal Regulation. It's right. part of that Code of Federal Regulation, which is which means it's a law. It's been signed off by by government by uh, by Congress, uh, and it's uh, as I said, it's uh, it's it's basically in the annals of our laws. Uh, well, there is a book called Preamble to CGNP. It's hard to find now, but back in the day, uh, it was there. Basically, these are conversations between uh, the industry representatives and the FDA, which were helping them to write these uh, this this uh, this you know uh, basically Fine. code. Yeah, and and that was that was very very insightful uh, because it gives you uh, this conversation and an uh, example of the they would discuss a word, a simple word for hours, <laughs> uh, and and this is how the guidances are written. Right. This is, okay. this is so people when they write them they actually mean something. Uh, and 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 so, the I would urge people to go and and look it up, and see how it, how it's done, and it'll give them more insights of of why they're important. I hope that makes sense. Absolutely, it makes sense. And, and I think just my experience in dealing with um, with folks in the industry, quality um, control, compliance professionals, they are interested in what the guidances have to say. Um, but whether they're, to your point, able to interpret them accurately um, is another story. And it also seems to me that in some instances, the guidances are not offering specifics in terms of how to implement them or they're, they're more suggestions. So it's kind of left open um, for interpretation, I would say. Um, so. I think it that poses a challenge in general to folks who are um, are wanting to maybe follow the rules, so to speak. They want to have the highest quality uh, products, but they may not know how to get there. Is that fair? That's that, that's a very that's that's excellent. Uh, <laughs> there's a there's a problem with that though, and I tell you what the problem is. Of so course. we so we want to follow the rules, okay. The rules should not be. The rules should, of course, they should be written. Okay, and and the guidances are. are so CGMP is 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 kind of a law, so you can be written up. It's this is a Exor- this is, exactly. this, this is the, you get tickets for, right? Yeah. You get your forty threes and the citations and, and the citations and <laughs> yes, and and injunctions and what have you. Okay, right. Uh, the the problem with that is, is that uh, if you are precisely following the law uh it's great it's awesome but if you're not thinking okay if if you're here the 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 biggest problem with that is your process okay and your product because because as anything in the world it's variable and if you want something that you follow to the t uh i'm not telling you not to follow it to, to the t what i'm telling you is You've got to be agile enough to understand that variability. 
And that is where the where the regulation right now is. And for a lot of people, it 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 makes uh it makes a lot of challenge. They don't right. understand they don't understand that. Well, what can I tell you? You've got to learn. You've got to learn. So uh, um yeah, I mean the challenge is is is, is it at what you're what you're kind of kind of asking uh well they're they're interpretive. Well you don't want you don't want those those guidances to be uh, a very very precise. I can't make a guidance for every facility, for every firm. Sure. Okay. Because because and I tell you right now, I've been working for these eight years. I like uh, a, a nice precise project where I can make an impact and help people to understand. Right. Uh, I I don't want to you know sit there for years. Why? Because I want them to to mind their own projects, them to mind their own business. Right. Okay, yes. because because who's going to I'm not going to be there forever for them. Right? right. I'll be happy. I'll be happy to stay to stay aside and and be a mentor. Uh, that that that's exactly what I like. OK, but I want them to think because they're day to day that that's the reason why I left the industry, because I wanted to do that. You know, I don't I don't want that day to day. I've done that for 30 years. Right. Okay? Uh, right. So so for them, they need to kind of understand that this is not to to be not precise, not not to follow. It is on the contrary. It is to be mindful of that shift in process. Be mindful of variability. Okay, and that's why when when we write those guidances, we're mindful of not being too prescriptive for someone. Okay, because we cannot take all of the all of the cases. As I said in in, in the last eight years, I've been working probably with. 40 or 50 different companies and every company, every company is different. Okay? Of course. Uh, they're all unique. On, in one case, they're all unique. In the other, in the, on the other side, they're, they're all the same in the way they interpret stuff. They're, they're so uh, e- 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 embedded in their day-to-day activities that they forget about guidances. And when they have, the only time when they remember that, when they have an issue, and that's why they have issues. Right. Sure. I, I mean, I, I, yeah, I think there's a variety of, of uh, components uh, to it, to the interpretation, to the deployment of it. Um, but I'm interested, because you have so much experience um, working with regulatory agencies on the behind the scenes stuff, the stuff that we don't really get to see, like how are these... Um, how are these guidances um, and review documents being created, you know, and how are you reviewing existing documents and making revisions? Because we see that there's revisions uh, or in a comment period right now for Annex 1. So we know from time to time these things, even though they may have been around for several years, they come back, circle back around and revisions need to be made. So um, can you talk a little bit about the behind the scenes process for both development and revisions for, sure. for gui- guidance documents? Right. So, 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 so first of all, first of all, it needs, there needs to be a need, right? Mm-hmm. So, so I, I'm going to bring off the top of my head, I'm going to bring an example of um, the, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, uh, emphasis, emphasis on the, um, uh, on, on, on the, a, a price of drugs, right? Sure. So, so people are looking into how to make it cheaper, right? Mm-hmm. So they say, okay, well, we're going to go out there and we're going to employ somebody who has this competent competency and capability to do uh, to do just that, to make the product for us. We're going to develop the product, okay? And and we're not going to we're not going to have a plant. We're just going to go to someone and do that. So that that that's what how contract manufacturing started, right? right? Well, the contract manufacturing is a great concept if if they make money. We're going to come back to the money, okay? And they're on the bottom of the food chain, right? Uh, because the brand makes all the money, the generic makes some of the money, and the contract manufacturing what do they produce? They produce nothing, right? Right. They all they get paid for services. Sure. That's all. Right. Per, per pill, and if they did not, if they did not um, um, account for how they make that those those prices, and how they how those services cost, 
they they may not make money. They may they may cut corners, right? And that's what we see a lot of times. So the there's there's your need, right? The need is to for people to understand that when you go to that contract manufacturer, um, then you need some kind of an agreement and understanding that uh, I am the owner of the formula or the owner of the product, and you are my extension. You're my manufacturing extension, extension, like a virtual extension for me, right? Sure. Great concept, right? And it's been going on for years and years and years until after 20 years of CMOs, people understood there is an issue because all of these manufacturers, they really, because they don't need, they don't have money, they have, you know, a problem with um, following guidances, um, having issues with, uh, with the, uh, um, you know, cutting corners, uh, they're getting written up all the time, right? So there's a need for a guidance. And the guidance is for quality agreements, okay? Right. This is after 20 years of contract manufacturing. We finally found out, oh, well, you know, we need something. That's a need. So, right. so, okay. so there is a need for a guidance, okay? Uh, similarly, we'd, let's let's come to the, so this, this is just an example, but let's come to the CMO, to, to the to the Annex One, sorry. So Annex One's been there for for probably another tw about twenty years, right? Right. And and so uh, now we're looking at the this this thoughtful approach, a life cycle, a risk based and science based. What it mean? What what it means? When we're talking about the risk and science uh, based approaches, we're talking about knowledge, statistics, data analysis, mm -hmm. uh, risk analysis, stuff like that, right? Right. Uh, so it it's it, so you need to interpret. We need to interpret how the aseptic practices work for you. Do you analyze your aseptic practices, right? Uh, and and even then, I mean, it it it, it poses. Look at that Annex One, right? It's been it's been in, in draft for for I want to say I'm off the top of my head probably three to five years already, simply because of the industry and technology is not there yet. That's another point. The uh, the progressing technology, right? So new equipment, uh, even though there's not that much of it, but there are <clears throat> there are new advances. So uh, it is it is uh, uh, um, uh, the guidances are written to. Um, or rewritten uh, to follow that, and, and and a lot of these guidances now being um, revised because of this life cycle uh, now approach to right, to the. Right. So when when you talk about when you said, oh well, uh, people want to have uh, rules, they want to follow to a T, right? This is where where now the the, uh, um, the regulators and and the uh, experts in the industry like myself uh, say, well, if you do that, then you're prone to, to problems because you will not be able to be uh, flexible enough to understand the variability. Right. And the variability is there. Sure. It is there, like in any process. Right. So, right. so we, we, our industry is no different than, than uh, uh, automobile industry or, or space and, uh, that we 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 have same challenges with data, and and this is what we need to understand, and that is a challenge. It's been a challenge now for ten years for people to start understanding that they need to understand the data, and this is not simply simply having a, just a, a a statistician somewhere on the side who will do it for you, but that statistician needs to understand what is he or she, it's, uh, uh, she or he analyzing. So, right. so what's the impact of the, you know, of the findings, right? How is it, correct. how is it correct. impacting correct. production or quality or um, efficiencies? Correct. So, correct. Correct. And, and so, and so when we talk about the, the development of the guidances, there needs to be a need. And then uh, the example of, of why are they being rewritten? Uh, something new comes up, right? So technology, um, uh, a new approach like, like this, 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 uh, even though FDA will come back to you and say, "Well, we always meant that." Funny enough, I'm going to come back to that preamble. If you if you come back to that preamble and you read that, 
people they were like to me those those people were were like uh like the the fathers of of our of our nation they right. they thought of a lot of things that preamble is so um poignant and, and interesting uh because it talks about design and talk talks about life cycle they thought about that they were very smart people back then unfortunately we're losing that i don't know with what with the internet or 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 social media i i don't know I don't but, know. But, they're going somewhere else. Not they're not coming to pharmaceutical. That's the problem. A right. We, we we're not yeah. right. We, we're 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 and and I'm I'm not sure why that is. Uh, and I find a lot of the um, a lot of the uh, wisdom in 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 those back days. I right. even have books here that um, from the early '80s on validation. Early '80s wasn't even validation guidance back then, sure. uh, where people talked about that. So uh, yeah, so there is there is that part. There is one part I wanted to mention here, and that's global uh, global reach of those guidances. That's another reason why they look a little bit different. That's another reason why, because for instance, we're we're writing these uh, ASDM guidances on cleaning validation, and when you look at those, we have uh, a person from Europe, a couple of people from Europe, we have uh, a couple of people from Asia, from Malaysia, from from uh, Japan, uh, from China, uh, we have people from India, uh, from United States, obviously, uh, and and uh, and that brings different approaches or different takes, uh, right. as simple as the difference in language. Okay, so so just want to you know it, this is a very very interesting example. There, uh, we in process validation we have this this term continued. Process verification. So the process validation is based on uh, stage one, which is development. Stage two, which is uh, um, uh, qualification, and stage three, when you continually monitor data. Okay. Sure. Well, <clears throat> that continued award continued was discussed by um, FDA and EMEA because they were they were uh, you know when the report when the <clears throat> When the guidance was was drafted, uh, they gave FDA guidance to EMEA to look at it. Of course, the EMEA is, a, is European medicinal right. agency, yeah. kind of a counterpart of FDA. And they looked at the word "continued" and they said, uh, "So there's some Germans there. Apparently, apparently, continued and continuous is the same word in German." And they said, well, "We want us to be continuous," and in English, it means something different because "continued" is one thing. It, and continuous is another thing. Continuous is, is never stopping. It never stops. <laughs> right. And continued is periodic. Right. 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 So so there's a there's an example. It was a six months uh discussion. It was yes. on, on a simple word. So so I hope it's people very find intense. it. Intense and time and labor intensive, time intensive. Yeah, and, and so and so you want to you want them to understand and you want sometimes it's you know it's it's uh basically we're gonna do it this way and let people learn what it means. Yes, right, right. So um focusing back a little bit on um the actual documents or guidances themselves, um, and you mentioned global global reach, and we do have global health authorities and regulators. Uh, commuting, communicating their expectations for risk and science-based justification for process control and validation approaches with Annex 1. You know, some of the big changes uh, right now are around sterility uh, and cleaning. So um, different documents obviously can address different issues and different parts of, uh, of the industry. Um, you highlighted the import importance of a true life cycle approach in a book that you wrote, Principles of Parenteral, parenteral, yes. how do you say that Inge word? Injections. Fast. <laughs> Process validation, a practical life cycle approach. Um, what's superior about the life cycle approach? I want to ask you that. And why is that the basis of a lot of the guidance documents we see today? So, so uh, uh, thank you for mentioning my book. That, that's, of course. That's, we'll have links to it in the show notes, too, for folks who are interested. That's, in a, that's now, amazing. But. That's amazing. I'll I'll send you five percent of my royalties. <laughs> uh, any anyway, so the, the as I said, this life cycle approach has to do with with measuring your um, measuring your data, understanding yeah. your process. 
right. understanding your product. And, and not just understanding your product, but also being prepared uh, to uh, deal with, with variability. Uh, and, and that's what's important about that. Um, so, so we have in the book there, there's, uh, I'm not gonna take entire, entire um, um, uh, 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 take on that, on that. I'm not the only, one, the only one who wrote it. So there, there are co-authors in this book. Um, yeah. So there's I have I have a co-editor Hall Basement, um, but uh, what we have there is every part of that we're talking about the life cycle with with these three stages that I talked about before stage one stage two stage, stage three uh, it is a gradual accumulation of data uh, which um, you know data has is been you know transformed into into reports, which becomes information, and then finally becomes knowledge. And eventually, hopefully you start understanding and, and, and hopefully, you know, you, you get into, into wisdom stage when, when you're making decisions based on this understanding. So when yeah. you look, actually, we can, we're gonna come back to the guidances. When you look at the ICH uh, Q9, which is, it's a, it's a um, uh, International Congress for Harmonization, which is kind of a conglomerate of the, uh, FDA, EMEA, and uh, um, Ministry of Japan, Health Ministry of Japan. Uh, it, it, it talks about, um, I'm sorry, Q, uh, Q10, uh, which, is, okay. which, is, which, is, which is pharmaceutical quality systems. It talks about two enablers uh, for the uh, quality systems, for the successful quality systems, and that's risk management and knowledge management. And, and those are two things. Think about just two things, okay? That, that's why people get confused and they, they get uh, overwhelmed with, with various, various uh, you know, guidances and, 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 and rules and regulations. Uh, but if, if, you, if they master those two things, understanding how to do risk, risk assessment, and you can talk, they can look at the book, I'm not gonna go in, into the book, but we, we're basically talking about that every aspect of the uh, injectable or aseptic processing um, and, and show actual uh, practical examples of how to exercise risk management. And based on that risk management, uh, design your, your process and, and design your product, okay? So, so it has to do with, with uh, knowing what the risks for the processes are, how to uh, identify them, how to um, analyze them, evaluate them, and mitigate them. Okay, so that that's why it's so important. It's it's, it's extremely important for for people to um, uh, to understand that they, that it's not a standstill. Any not no process is standstill. It is variable, right. and and it could vary uh, at any moment. Okay, with regards to with regards to things like sterility, once again. Um, older equipment, uh, that is one of the reasons why antiquated facilities um, having a lot of issues with uh, sterility all around the world. Um, so uh, there's got to be mitigation uh, practices out there. And how are you going to mitigate if you don't know what the risks are, right? Right. And so, it's, and you had mentioned the guidance uh, Q10, but there's Q8 and Q9. Uh, that are also um, focused on the risk-based approach to manufacturing. Uh, and obviously you are well-versed in those guidances as you are in process validation. What do you, what are the major challenges? I mean, you mentioned um, maybe not having, I'm, I'm wondering if it's manpower in, or, or untrained, people are not trained. I mean, because if the guidances are there, Assuming folks are reading them and they have their process in place, as we mentioned at the beginning, what are what are the biggest stumbling blocks? Um, biggest stumbling blocks is once again money. <laughs> it always comes back to the almighty yeah, dollar. Oh, uh, yes, it comes back to the money. So we don't spend enough money on development, and we don't spend enough time on. Uh, risk identification. Uh, case in point, case in point, coronavirus right now, right? right? It's, you know, 
I'm not saying that that you could you could go and predict the novel vaccine, right? Novel, I'm sorry, the novel, novel virus. But what you can do is uh, you can have you can have uh, enough um, base out there to to be at a better place uh, with the vaccines for these kind of viruses, right? Uh, so why am I mentioning that? Because the biggest stumbling block, okay. It starts with that Q, Q8, okay, pharmaceutical development, okay? Right. There's not enough time, and then there's not enough priority. Why that is? Why there is no, why there's no vaccine? Because there's no money in vaccine. Right, right. That's all it is. There is no, there is no money, number one. There is no, there's not enough people to, to go and, and do testing for those vaccines. So why would we work on those? Right. right. We see that a lot with the rare disease uh, industry, too. Right. There's a lot of uh, manufacturers who don't want to develop drugs in the rare disease space because they're rare. There aren't there isn't the, the broad base of uh, patients who are going to consume those. Correct. Um, unless unless. So so one of my one of my great um, uh, hopes is that so I worked on the product uh, uh, um, in the last maybe five years. Um, on a product which was a genetic product, and it was a rare, it was a rare genetic disorder. Mm-hmm. The beauty of that of that development was that this is the future. This is the, so so the the delivery of a gene, okay, into your body, into the body is is pretty unique, and this could be so. This was for for uh, an, uh, congenital congenital um, um, blindness, um, and happened to be the uh, at the time, the most expensive product that was approved uh, in U.S. Um, but but the same way you can work on uh, things like uh, um, um, liver disorders, you know, kidney disorders, and so on, and deliver those genes in there. So this is one one of the one of my hopes that that people are going to start working on those because they would know how to uh, how to do that. But with with the with the um, Traditional uh, therapies, unfortunately, you know, there's no money. If there's no money in it, and and you go into synthesis and all that stuff, uh, unless you find uh, uh, some other ways to use older drugs, you know, it's 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 not as much. But what we see, what we see now, is a lot of a lot of uh, um, antibodies out there. Uh, a lot of work on those. So so that that gives me a lot of again a lot of hope hope on that. But uh, coming back to the question, is why. Uh, what are the challenges uh, of of this Q8, Q9, and Q10? Uh, number one is 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 that development. Number two is we're we're going into validation uh, with where this risk. This is Q8, Q9, Q10. You could you could basically say that this is the same thing as stage one, stage two, stage three, right? Yeah. So stage one it would be this Q8 from circle development. Uh, Q9 it's not um, too obvious. That Q9 has to do with it, with the with the verification, um, uh, which is with qualification. But that's what it is. This is when when you use risk management to figure out what is the variability out there based on the data from that uh, development, right? And a Q10 is very obvious. It's a it's a quality systems that that's what helps us to continually right. produce the product. So so we are not spending enough time in this Q8 um, a bucket. Um, and we go in, into the Q9, um, which is our qualification, and allowing, even though you know we we ramming stuff through, and then we're getting into Q, Q10, and eventually having issues there. Okay, so because so in Q10 over- we start to see the PQS and knowledge management systems, and how do, how are those then helping us or, or helping companies to? Um, focus more on risk management and uh, I guess um, overcoming some of the challenges that we just chatted about. Well, the, the funny part is, is that they, people, number one, need to buy those and use those <laughs> and analyze those. And they're not cheap and they're not cheap. Right. And you can't, and you can't blame manufacturers of these. Uh, so, so somebody selling you, selling you a uh, quality and end up quality, the knowledge, um, Management or knowledge analysis, uh, and I'm not talking about the document control systems. I'm talking about I'm talking about things like uh, like the, uh, the 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 knowledge analysis, right? 
Yeah. Um, so there, there are a few out there. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to do any. People can any look ad- them up. We, yeah, right. Advertisement for them, but they're they're out there. Okay. Uh, you got Oracle. You got Biovia. You got. I can tell you companies that you got IBM that that has has software out there. Uh, so so first of all, you want you want to want to do that. Okay. You want to build your organization to number one purchase. Number two. Um, Put the data, or 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 feed the data, feed that uh, um, plant, uh, and then get the results out and analyze those results. Okay, so so uh, for first of all, they they need to have them. Second, uh, they need to use them. Okay, and they need to need to use them correctly. And that's part of what what I try to try to tell people is that um, only data can allow you to give. Uh, to understand your uh, your process, okay, that's that's the only the anal- the the analysis of your data will will allow you to understand and 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 be comfortable with it, okay. So uh, very very important to be comfortable with with what you have, okay. Uh, not a lot of people have that. I mean, I see very rarely where people are comfortable with what they're doing. <laughs> Which is um, yeah, that's scary. Actually, when you're talking well, about drug manufacturers and patient safety, well, uh, partially, partially, what I—that's what I see abroad a lot. Okay. Uh, so, so for, and and that is uh, partially of how they they um, they perceive their laws, and their laws have to be, you know. Um, Adhere to to a, to a T, and that's what they see in the guidance, and then they start. And the, our guidance, as I said, is, is are written so that they can be interpreted, and they interpret them the way they want to see them, and then follow exactly. So if they did something wrong, they'll continually doing something wrong. Right. Yeah. So so I mean, and that's a great point, right? Because that brings us back to this whole idea of a global process. Um, you know, across the life cycle and, and ha- why it's so essential to quality. Um, so we do have regulatory agencies who are putting out these guide guidelines for quality. Um, and yet we still see daily stories about companies who um, are either non-compliant or just producing low quality um, products. So why isn't complying with health authority regulations? You know, they get they get audited and, and people come walk through there. So why isn't complying with these health authority regulations enough to ensure highest quality? Uh, well, that's a that's a very that's a very very good, very good question. <laughs> so 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 it's it's easy it's easy to say that uh, we're gonna we're gonna comply with the with with the regulation. Okay. Right. Uh, and we're going to interpret, just like I said in the, in the last uh, in the last bit, that we're going to con- we're going to comply and we're going to interpret it the way we want to interpret it, and then continually doing something that interpretation, let's say, is wrong. And uh, that is that is the, the single reason why you need to you need to think, you need to uh, apply it to your to your product to your process. Uh, you need to understand uh, your equipment, right? So, sure. so that's that's the reason why I said that the people don't don't read guidances, is is because because people people want simple answers, right? Okay? And when you make medicine, there are no simple answers. Okay, as I said, we, we're we're same as other industries data wise, but we're definitely not the same uh, with regards to care and variability. Okay, when we talk about variability, we talk about we talk about uh, raw materials. We talk about different different synthesis. We're talking about different people that comes to the come to the plant. We're talking about yeah, right. different exactly. equipment, facilities, parts of the world. That is not the same throughout the world. That why that's why you need to apply. If I write the guidance, I wrote the guidance for a general manufacturing. I don't care if you're in India, in China, in Russia, uh, or in U.S. Okay. You need to have same exact measure. Yeah, it needs to be uniform, right? More uniform. So, but we're talking about we're talking about 
um, uh, people in the U.S. making making twenty bucks, twenty five bucks an hour, right? Mm-hmm. And p- people in in China making you know uh, maybe twelve dollars an hour, and people in in India making buck and a half, right? A day. So, 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 so what kind of care you would, you would, you would take from, from there, right? Uh, Because again, we, we're back, we're back to money. We're back to, to understanding that. So right now there is, there is this, this uh, um, last year, um, the ICH started to think about rewriting uh, Q9. Why? Because people not using it. Okay, and and that's the, this is where where implementation of Q9, and that's what I see abroad, and even here, the people think that Q9, that that risk management uh, guidance, is is just a formality. It's not a formality. Okay. Right. Before you jump, before you jump, right, into the ocean, right. You want right. to see how how high. Is that creek is, or how high you you're 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 standing, uh, where you're standing on, right? Before you you can assess if I can jump there. Well, that's that's what we kind of do. We're gonna jump without you know maybe without parachutes, and that that's that's the biggest problem. That's, that's the biggest problem out there. No, it's not. It's not. It's a. Yeah. It's some people are, some people don't. But but I see a lot of that. I see, I see a lot of old equipment still. Uh, even though it's it 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 it, it start changing a little bit, I see uh, a brand new facilities, for instance, in China, uh, which is which is awesome. Right. You know? um, see some great facilities here, uh, but unfortunately, as I said, um, people do not exercise those those uh, guidances on risks on risk and knowledge. So it seems that that um, you know a lot of companies are not as focused maybe on quality, on the end quality as they should be. And I wonder if, you know, going forward, it it seems like we have to start to change people's thought, the industry's thought processes on this whole thing. And you, you talk about Q8, Q9, Q10, which is really the development. So good design, qualification, continued verification. Um, What do we, what's, you know what's to be gained from following that process, and and for these companies, and you know why? How are we going to get them to jump on that bandwagon? So, so um, <clears throat> number one, number one, right? Uh, when you follow that thought process, when you follow that life cycle, life lifestyle, rather, right? Um, you will understand your variability and what's going to happen. Then there's going to be less surprises. Or even if when you have a surprise, then you may know how to deal with that surprise. Less surprises mean less deviations. Yes. Less deviations means what? More production. More production, less recalls, less uh, time more, with Kappas. More, and, money, and more, more money, more money, more money. Exactly. Okay? So, so, uh, unfortunately, people don't see that far. You know, we have we we in this industry, and and I'm sorry to say this. I I, I thought when I started back 38 years ago, I thought I, I looked at our CEOs and I said and I said, wow, these are smart people. These are well, you know, I worked first my first of my 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 well, my first well 20 years. I worked for for the same company. And I went to through 13 CMO uh, CEOs. Wow. And and they ran this company to the ground. And so happened that original owners of the companies were the most successful in what they were doing. Okay? Because why? Four letter word. Yeah. Four letter word care. care. Because they yeah. cared. They're invested in it. That's right. Right. And and and, and that's one of the one of the things. Uh, our care, in a lot of cases, the care of the brands are not in patients, but in the shareholders. Yes. Yeah. We see that all too often. 
Not Why? Just because because we want investment. Yeah. Because we want investment, right? So, board, so, right? so if you think about, if you start, and I, again, I don't want to politicize this, but eventually, eventually you get into politics of, of, of where this thing going, okay? Right. And, and again, this is not, this is not a social media, right? This no. is not, this is not, this, these are people, people's, uh, you know, people's lives. Unless yeah. somewhere in the future, maybe the next 200 years come up with the, with a genetic, Genetic medicine, which will, would be, you know, basically substitution of genes, well, then that's great. Then we don't need to worry about that. We'll go there. We'll come there. Yeah, not maybe not in our lifetime, but eventually we will. But again, I mean, if you cannot, if you cannot think that far, and and from that fifty thousand feet, then think about simple things, like as I said, less surprises, right? Less right. deviations, right? Less, more yeah. production, more production. Less headache. <laughs> less headache, more production. And, and wait, 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 wait. The regulators will come there and you're comfortable with what you have. You can explain to them what you're doing. Right, right, exactly. Which means less citations, less findings, less, yeah. Exactly. Comments back exactly. From, from regulators. I hope that makes Before, sense. This has, been, this has been so fun. Before I let you go, I do want to see if I can get your comments. You know, we've talked a lot about guidances uh, today in terms of process validation. Um, and then, of course, we mentioned Annex 1, which is focused on sterility issues. Um, why do you feel it's important for cleaning validation to follow process validation guidance lead? Um, and start to develop their own um, regulatory documents and um, pay more attention. Talk excellent, more. excellent question. It could, it may, it may take me like years to answer that question, <laughs> but I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer it in 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 uh, in the next maybe uh, ten minutes uh, or five minutes. Uh, so so um, initially, back about ten years ago, I was talking to uh, to FDA. Uh, actually, people that um, uh, that uh, wrote the process validation guides and new guidance, sure. and and they said, you know, we have this guidance out there, um, and we are okay with it. Uh, but that guidance wasn't even a guidance for cleaning validation; it was a guidance for inspection of cleaning processes, um, cleaning validation processes. It was written back in in uh, ninety three, uh, which is. You know, ex actually, exactly same same month and year my son was born. And, oh wow! Uh, yeah, so he was born back then, and now and now he's uh, he's his own man on a journey. He's twenty six. <laughs> so, um, but but uh, uh, seriously, cleaning is a process, just like any process. Uh, and uh, if you want to understand your cleaning, if you want to answer the questions why I have failures, uh, then you have to follow that. When you, right. you have no choice, but uh, and 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 for years we were basically saying, well, you know, what what what's is there is there any um, uh, is there any issues or or any value in cleaning? Because uh, people will say, you know, there there is really no value in it, right? It is liability. It, yeah. it, it you, you don't make money on cleaning, right? Right. You just got to clean in between. You just just have make to sure, yeah. just yeah, just make sure you don't contaminate something, right? Exactly. So, so unfortunately, as I said, when we and, and this is kind of a coming back to what we talked about, it, th this is this is understanding your processes. So if you do not have that process in line, and and that process is variable, right? Guess what? Time to time you're going to contaminate, right? Yeah. And right. then what? And then you come back. We're going to come back to your process, and your process doesn't work because you contaminated. So you need to you. I I know there's a lot of there are a lot of these uh, little details. In, in the process, so we we talked about cleaning, but we didn't talk about equipment. We didn't talk about facilities and stuff like that. But it's it's out there too, right? It is it is part of your variability, okay? And that's why and that's why in my book, I'm still gonna mention my book. In my book, well, I have a chapter on that. Right. I have a chapter on that, and I have a chapter on on environmental monitoring because that's another part, right? Very important. So you right, and you want to understand it. Uh, I want to leave. People with this uh, notion, or, or or one of my one of my slogans, you're not good because you passed. Okay, absolutely. You're not good because you passed. Just because you passed doesn't mean anything. 
right? right. Because right. I don't know how you pass. Okay, you may be passing uh, on the brink of failure. Okay, and a lot of times that is okay because you don't know your variability, and that's right. why we we <clears throat> the team of us who are working on these guidances for cleaning and and trying to implement them, and it's not a burden to the people. On the contrary, it we're doing that for people to understand their processes. Okay, yeah. that's why it's so important. And that's what it's all, it always comes back to the processes, right? Correct. Having this, the, process, the solid process in place, knowing your protocols, understanding if A happens, B is the result, right? right. And so that's exactly right. The better, is, better companies can get at is, doing that. So that's exactly uh, right. Yeah. If, if, so. you, if, you, if you know your risk, right? It's the same thing with the risk. If you know your risk, right, then, then you, can, you can analyze it right yes and and you can evaluate it right and you can mitigate it right right it's it's knowing cause and effect right or pre- once you know more of these cause and effects you you get to the point of wisdom and you start predicting those right absolutely absolutely and that's what you want to do i agree well that is one for the books, Igor. That was a great conversation. Before I let you go, any last words of wisdom or final thoughts you want to share with the listeners? Yes. So, so two things, three things. Thing number one, thank you very much. I I liked it very much. Good. I, I like the conversation. I hope you invite me more. Uh, that's one thing. Second, I think that this is great for the industry. I think the more of these uh, podcasts or the more uh, people listen to them, uh, perhaps they're going to start uh, thinking uh, in terms of um, in terms of knowledge and in terms of their processes. Right. And I think it's extremely useful. Why? Because we do not. That's one of the things that I think that we're missing in this uh, in this industry is popularizing. So, so all of these popularizings were going on with uh, industry organizations, uh, but now you got you got a lot of a lot of uh, um, media out there, the written media, the the LinkedIn's, the uh, uh, the the different different uh, letters and stuff. Who reads anything, right? Uh, people watch things, right. right? Watch the watch them and listen to them. They because listen to them in the car, at the gym, on their way the gym, here and there, right? Right, and and maybe maybe there is a maybe there is a, in 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 uh, uh, five thousand words that you and I just said uh, there was there was maybe two that were important and strike something with them, that's and, and I think right. and and I think that's important. I think I think that's what makes uh, this uh, makes this uh, so exciting, um, and and I'm congratulating you on it. I think it's great. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Igor. It has been great to have you with us today. I really do appreciate your time. Uh, Thank you also to our producer, Ben Kitchen, and the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. I also want to give a big shout out to all of you, our valued listeners. So if you like Voices and Validation, we encourage you to subscribe in your podcast player of choice so you never miss an episode. And don't forget to share it with your colleagues and online networks. For more information on this podcast and links from today's show, please visit www.ivtnetwork.com. And we'll be back again next week with more great interviews. Until then, make it a great week. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.